Perhaps the most undesirable thing about 32 H&R Magnum is the cost. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In some previous videos, we talked about the history of this 327 Federal Magnum. And I really enjoyed doing that series and I learned a lot along the way. I sort of stumbled onto the characteristics of a bullet that I was aware of but never really paid much attention to out of that series which is called the 32 H&R Magnum, H&R standing for Harrington and Richardson. That company has its own deep history in the firearms business and actually began in 1871 as a company called Harrington and Wesson. Yes, that's correct. The other part of the company was Frank Wesson, Dan Wesson's brother, who also used to work for Smith & Wesson. That's going to be an important thing to keep track of as we go forward because as both companies developed, they sort of copied or modeled some of the characteristics and strategies to stay in business while they invented new calibers along the way. The 32 h and Magnum was developed in 1984 as a joint venture between h and and Federal Premium Ammunition. Now, here's the part where things get a little strange for me and if there are some viewers out there that know more about this than me, please contact me or leave a comment. I could not find any direct evidence of H&R producing a revolver that actually shot the caliber that they were going to develop. In fact, H&R went out of business in 1986. They resurfaced some years later and also by now are owned by Marlin. So there's been various sort of incantations of the company and to this day, I could not find any hard evidence to suggest that H&R themselves actually made a revolver to shoot the caliber. But like I said, maybe you guys can help me out with that. Back in 1984, what they were attempting to do, in my opinion, was to revive the company that they could see had fallen on hard times. This was a common thing to do in the firearm industry going clear back to the 1800s, where Smith & Wesson would develop their own calibers and then make guns for it. For instance, the 32 Smith & Wesson series, short to long, is a good illustration of this. In fact, back in the day, meaning in the 1800s, H&R also had a 32 H&R black powder cartridge. And some people get confused when you're going through the history that 32 H&R is not actually 32 H&R Magnum. Those events happened actually a hundred years apart. In fact, this is a particular model from the early 1900s that would potentially shoot a 32 h and R. This is actually chambered in 32 Smith short. And you can tell, even though made by h and R, it closely resembles the Smith & Wesson model 1, 2, and 3 and actually is a break top design like the Smith models. They were very, very similar in appearance and function. So, moving forward, H&R began to develop revolvers that looked something like this. Probably their most famous one was the 732. This is actually an 832. But the whole problem with this series was the 32 Smith & Wesson cartridge isn't terribly powerful. It's not going to wow anybody with its ballistic capabilities, so they decided to lengthen the case change some powders up, and develop more power. Now what I discovered in some previous videos was it is extremely shootable because it does not have a lot of recoil, but it has speed, and being a flat shooter, I found it to be extremely accurate. So if you can take a look right here, we have the 32 Smith Long. This is the 32 H&R Magnum range round or wad cutter. The self-defense version, this is a 100 grain Hornady XTP round. And next to it, we're trying to illustrate this is the 327 Federal Magnum, which was an improvement, wink wink, over the 32 h and Magnum. If you've seen the previous video, you will know already that I did not find it to be in any way an improvement based on its recoil, but please watch the video and draw your own conclusions. During the mid-1980s, H&R had planned for Ruger to be the main drive behind the sales of their new caliber 
and the Ruger SP-101. I must tell everyone for the interest of full disclosure, this is actually a 22 long rifle version of it, but the size and heft would be pretty similar. And the SP-101 and 32 h and Magnum would hold seven rounds. Now, moving forward to today's standards, there's not a lot of weapons available chambered in 32 h and Magnum. You can get the Ruger LCR and LCX, and I've also found it interesting that the most prevalent makers of 32 h and Magnum guns is actually Charter Arms. They have several models available from something they call the Professional right on down to the Undercover Et. The issue before us, and as we go forward, we're going to try and illustrate whether or not it has any relevancy as an everyday carry caliber and test its ballistic capability in our normal setup using the FBI test and ballistic gel. We've sort of given a hint based on the last video that it did pretty well, but we didn't extensively test it as I would like to at different distances and using our normal setup. It's also worth noting that H&R had developed the caliber as sort of a back burner varmint cartridge. Because of that, you can currently get a Marlin 1894 CB lever action rifle in 32 h and R, and it has proven to be a very, very effective varmint round inside of a close distance. So you can see that flat shooting terminal ballistics is a very desirable thing. Perhaps the most undesirable thing about 32 h and R Magnum is the cost. It's a very expensive round to buy, very expensive to train with, and not terribly prevalent on the shelves, as everybody seems to be more interested in 327 Federal. However, both remain a niche caliber. So when you can have the ability to buy ammo, you should, but bear in mind, it is going to be expensive. And another positive attribute to 32 Magnum is you can also shoot all the smaller 32s out of it. S and W long all the way down to short. So it does have the versatility. Bear in mind, you cannot shoot the 327 out of it because of the extra case length. Speaking of case lengths, the overall case length of the 32 h and Magnum is 1.35 inches and a bullet diameter of 0.312. Projectiles weighing from 77 grains to 100 grains are available and in self-defense based ammunition, you're ranging right around 300 to 325 foot-pounds of energy, which is getting on the doorstep of nine millimeter and based on the bullet, perhaps even a little better. The SAMI spec for the round is loaded to a maximum pressure of 21,000 PSI. And when done so, I think you're gonna have a very shootable, accurate, and accurate stopping power projectile. I'm excited to test this out further in the field. Stay tuned for that video. And as always, if you like what we're doing, don't be afraid to like and subscribe.